That's not all on the program. We've got another guest to explore another angle with. Right, so if we're going to explore space long term, more than rockets and satellites, there's the other aspect. Hmm. Building manufacturing in the space itself. That's where some of India's best minds come in. At IIT Madras, for example, the XTEM Research Group is working on groundbreaking technology. What is XTEM? <coughs> we'll talk about it in just a second. Professor Satyan Subhia is with us right now. He's the faculty coordinator of the XTEM program. XTEM, uh, sir, let's just tell our audiences, it stands for Extraterrestrial Manufacturing Research. And at IIT Madras. Thank you for joining us this morning, Professor. In the next few minutes, we're hoping will be a little like sitting in one of your classrooms. We'll have you explain a lot of the definitions for us. You know, we are lay people. We don't have a, a deep understanding of this. So we're going to ask you to start off by just telling us what is manufacturing in space for space? How is that different from manufacturing in space for Earth? What does it mean? Can you just break that down for us? Sure, manufacturing in space uh, for space means that I'm going to make things uh, in space and use them in space itself. So, for example, now let's say, you know, uh, India wants to create a, 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 you know, a base in the moon. So, we want to make things on the moon and use them in the base itself, right? Uh, or if you're going to have a base in Mars, uh, that's what we mean by manufacturing in space for use in space. Whatever we're going to make, 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 use it right there. Manufacturing in space for Earth is a little different. Uh, it's a lot more commercial angle to it. That is, uh, imagine uh, factories, uh, you know, floating around in orbit. Not satellites now, but you know, factories. My, let's call them space factories, where we send raw material to that factory. It's going to make products, and then I'm going to bring it back to the Earth and use it here. That's what we mean by manufacturing in space for Earth. So there are certain things that, you know, that that will uh, that we can make better when there is no gravity, for instance. That's why we want to do, want to do something like that. I see. You know, one of the papers that you write, and they're very fascinating, a lot of it beyond our understanding. But the one word that keeps coming back, and that is microgravity. Could you uh, sort of uh, dumb it down for us on what exactly does that mean and how that is the basis of a lot of innovation that you do? Sure. You know, on the Earth here, there is always, we always feel the, you know, the pull of gravity. So if you hmm. drop your cell phone, it falls down because the Earth is sort of attracting the cell phone. Uh, uh, what is also important is that every you know every atom and molecule in that cell phone also feels that force you know mm. so and that is actually uh, uh, we, we take it for granted it's always there and all our whatever manufacturing activities that we do whether it's an industry that makes uh, you know your coca cola or whatever the, the the gravity force is always there and our process is always uh, tuned to that now when you go into a free fall state like when you are in uh, you know let's say you are in a lift and the lift just snaps and you're just falling down for example, or if you're on satellite, the satellite is also in a continuous free fall, for instance, the gravity effect is not there. And when the gravity effect is not there, certain phenomena, uh, you know, changes. So things like, for example, convection, you know, hot air rises and then cold air comes down, we say, mm. for example, that's because of gravity effect that is not there. So when you have liquids and you have, you know, gases, they behave very differently under the lack of gravity. And that's what changes things uh, when you manufacture things in space. Any examples, sir, you can share of that, like some of the products that you're developing because of microgravity, just to sort of get a sense of it? Yeah, so for example, uh, you know, uh, there, there are three products that, are, that pe people think are commercially interesting to make in space and bring it back for Earth. Uh, one is optical fibers, the other one is uh, semiconductor crystals, and the third one is organoids, bioprinting, for example. Let's say bioprinting, you know, so, so if, for example, if, I'm a, if you're a pharmaceutical company or developing a new medicine that's needed for a certain disease, you would want to test that on a, on a certain tissue, for example, right? Hmm. Now, obviously, you cannot do that on a live person. It has to be some sort of a simulated tissue, and uh, one of the similar tissues is called organoids. And those organoids are very difficult to grow in under Earth conditions because gravity is always pulling the cells down, for instance. Hmm. And now, if I do that in space, I can make the organoids better, uh, uh, and th those are a significant value add to a pharmaceutical company, for example. Yeah. The oh. second example is, uh, you know, uh, optical fibers. You have internet that's coming to your home or office through okay. a silica fiber. It's actually glass, basically glass, optical, uh, you know, glass. Uh, uh, but if you have a if you have a different material than silica, which is uh, which we call a zeblan, that material has a higher bandwidth. It can carry more signals across a wider mm -hmm. spectrum, for example. But it's very difficult to make in, on the earth here. The gravity always uh, disturbs the process of making the fiber. But if I make the fiber in space, you know, I can make that better. I can make it, you know, I can make, if I imagine I can go to send all the raw material to a, you know, optical fiber factory in space. Hmm. And that makes it and sends it back and I'm going to use it on Earth. So that's sort of one, one other example that we can say where gravity significantly influences you know, the, the manufacturing process. 
So fascinating. Uh, Professor, what is mastery in concrete? Because reading about that was fascinated by its yeah. name. Just tell us what it is and, and uh, how you are developing it, please. Sure, yeah. So, our uh, my colleague, Professor Piyush, uh, in our civil, depart civil engineering department, is uh, he's an expert on building structures, for example. So, he's part of the center and we've been working with him on trying to, uh, you know, uh, use... Uh, how do we use... I mean, before I go into the concrete, just one basic question is, how do I use the sand that's available on Moon or Mars, right? So we go wow. land on moon or Mars, what do we find? We don't mm. find trees, we don't find you know, rocks, but we mm. find a whole, whole bunch of sand that is there on it. So how do you make mm. use of the sand? So one of the uses of sand is, of course, you know, we want to establish you know, you know, uh, settlements. Like we want to build a house or an office space, or bricks, uh, walls and so forth. You mean, so what on, is, you mean on the planet? That on, you on the to, moon, on yeah. the on the yeah, we're talking about on the mm -hmm. moon or mm -hmm. on the on the Mars. Mars. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So what uh, what uh, one of the research that uh, you know the, our group has done, which is uh, Piyush's group, is uh, he, he takes the sand and figures out, okay, how do I mix? What do I mix with it? How do I bind it together so that I can make little concrete blocks, for example, right? Mm -hmm. So here on the earth, if you want to build a house, what do you do? You call the company. They'll bring some cement. They'll bring some bricks. They'll bring some gravel. Mm -hmm. uh, you put some reinforcements and you make your your houses. But then what do I do on Mars, right? So we, we look at we look for what chemicals are available in Mars. Yeah, so water is not available. So we take sulfur, uh, for example, is, we could probably extract sulfur from the you know on the surface of Mars. So we we mix that with the soil. Now soil, of course, we don't have the soil here, but we have what is called simulants, sim the soils that simulate how the Mars looks like. So we mix that in various proportions. We did all, all kinds of different experiments to figure out what is the optimal sort of configuration that would work. We mm. made bricks, uh, and then we sort of tested compression, did some compression tests on them to figure out they're mm. as good as you know, uh, uh, good enough to use for a construction purpose, for example. And yeah, so we have made some of those prototypes, and we think that the compression strength is good enough to actually start, start building structures with it, for instance. So that would be Martian concrete. Yeah. Yeah, so another word for that is waterless concrete. Is Am I saying that correct? And that correct, also yeah, because there's no more use of water there, yeah. Mm, yeah. That's, so yeah. imagine concrete and structures being built without water and that's that right. testing being done by you guys. So some spectacular stuff there. Uh, but sir, I have a more fundamental question that I want to understand from you. Mm -hmm. Last couple of years, uh, rocketry has become, or what happens in space, uh, ISRO, etc., with all the achievements that the organization is doing, has become rather cool. We recently had a series called Rocket Boys. Everybody loved it. Fundamental questions like, oh, why are we spending in space when we have so many other issues to actually deal with in India also cropped up? If What is it that the entire fraternity needs today for those watching right now is it talent is it infrastructure is it money what is the need of the hour that will really sort of catapult us and put us in the top three players when it comes to space yeah i mean uh, i think the the one word i would say is you know uh, thinking out of the box yeah so innovation if you want to call it and space is a spectacular uh, you know um, sort of a, uh, um, uh, um, a seed for thinking out of the box because you know you are in space you are you know you have different constraints there so you so if you can if you can come up with some cool ideas and i think we have plenty of bright minds in the country so thinking out of the box uh, you know um, thinking boldly thinking crazy ideas and then figuring out testing them some of them will fail that's fine but then we will find that one idea that will work i think that's really what is required you know if you if you look at uh, the various competitions that uh, worldwide space agencies launch is just this they want ideas they they launch a competition and say okay here you know i want to make use of the food packaging that comes into the space station how can i recycle it and make stuff they want ideas so i think mm -hmm. this if you can come up with cool ideas test them in a very small way prove them out and then you know figure out how to you know get them launched into space and make use of it i think that's really what is needed in india and Professor, tell us, because walk us through some of the stories you've seen of young students hopefully coming up with these bright ideas, coming to you, coming to other professors and going, could this be something that works? What are examples you've seen? Yeah, so for example, at IIT Madras, we have this, uh, you know, we, we have, of course, our research students, MS and PhD students, and, you know, they come up with ideas, everyday discussions we have with them. So my student, Nitya, came up with some ideas on how regolith can be used in various ways, for example. Uh, so, so our, our, our PhD research students are, are constantly coming up with ideas, uh, testing them out. Some of them work, some of them really, you know, they, they, they really are successful, which leads to, you know, papers and startups and so forth. And we also have uh, undergraduate students uh, and master's students who work in a center for innovation. So they form student clubs, they participate in competitions, and I, I mentor, I, have, I happen to mentor two of them, and they, they, they keep coming up with new ideas. They, they test them, 
you know this mm. is not in the classroom they are outside the classroom they are sort of playing around with, with the hardware mm. the software and so forth so that's that's sort of that's the thing the school thing that's happening in our campus and is really exciting to see absolutely lovely cool stuff happening from rocket boys and girls really in your campus we hope the next big idea actually crops up from there and we are able to chat again about how that path breaking that has been thank you so much professor for your time this morning thank you